Hello everyone and in this lesson we're going to take a look at how to make a simple cloud shader in Karma. Okay, so I have this like this is the ready this is the final result that we will hopefully get. Okay, so the setup is pretty simple. I'd made a cloud using Axiom like a long time back. You can just you know download a cloud model or you know whatever that you have and I have like a physical sky but you can take a dome light or you know whatever kind of lighting you prefer. Okay, so what I'm going to do is uh, if you come in here and if you type in uh, Karma, then you'll get like a cloud material. Okay, but what I've done is I've taken the cloud material and I've sort of just reset all the values to zero so that, you know, we can start from scratch. So let me assign this first and then we can start working. So I can just come in here and I think this is cloud material two. So let's take that and there you go. So this is what you'll get by default. Now, uh, there are a few things you need to do with this. Okay, the first thing is like you get a new material properties node in there which allows you to control the uh, the bounces for you know each particular channel. So you can have like diffuse bounces on a per material basis or reflection on a per material basis. So we have like a volume limit. So if you just, so if you have like, let's say some smoke which you don't want to have any kind of volume bounces, but you have like a cloud in the sky that should have like say 10 volume bounces, then you can do that from here. So you don't need to do that within the within the render properties, right? So if I take this and let's say increases up to five, so this will now have five volume bounces. Okay, so this immediately starts looking a little better. So let's start at about, uh, we'll start at five. Now there are a few things that we want to do with this. Okay, the first thing is that, uh, I would like the shadow density to be a little bit low. So I'll get this to around like 0 0.3. Okay, so it's kind of, it lights up a bit. And then uh, I'm gonna take the density up to about three. These are sort of values that you can sort of tweak around and play with them. And uh, the one important thing you need to work with is the anisotropy. So what the anisotropy does is sort of like uh, it, pushes the light out towards like the corner. So when the sun goes behind and you know, you want to get the, the cloud should get like a silver lining. That's what an isotropy does. So if I just take this light, uh, if I take my sunlight and I kind of just push it towards the back, let's say here. Okay. And we'll just lower the sun a little bit. And if I start to increase the anisotropy, you'll start to see the difference. So it takes a few seconds, but there you go, see. So now you can see the, the edges kind of starting to light up. So you, you uh, I can keep it around like 0 0.7. 0 0.7 is nice with this. Okay, now along with this, the one more, the one thing you need to do is you also want to take care of the extinction falloff. So what the extinction falloff does is it sort of reduces the shadow darkness. So the more you increase it, you'll see like the cloud becomes a bit lighter. See, there you go. Okay, so if I can take this up to around like 0.4, then see your you know cloud becomes fairly sort of light. So we can lower the anisotropy a bit now. Uh, I think maybe my sun is too bright. Let me just check the physical sky. Yeah, let me just lower that a little. Yeah. Okay, but we're losing a bit of definition. So what I can do is I can take the smoke brightness a little higher and that will that will sort of bring back a little more definition in the cloud. See, there you go. So you kind of like, you know, play around with it till you're kind of happy. And then I can take the volume limit, generally around eight or nine is good enough. It'll usually keep it pretty high. So some, something like 20 or 30, but you don't need that. Like uh, over a value of like 15, you'll barely see a difference anyways. So it doesn't make any sense to go. See, like at 15, you're getting like something, but if you come all the way up to 30, you might not notice too much. See like, and it'll just unnecessarily, like this is at 15 and 30, they're like almost the same. So I think like eight, between eight and 15, you can make out a bit of difference. Like you're getting like this light happening here, like at eight, that isn't there as much. See at eight, you're not getting, you know, that. So like, you know, 15 is good. So yeah, somewhere between 10 to 15 and you'll be in like that, that good enough zone where, you know, it looks nice and it has like a relatively decent render time. This is going to be slow. I mean, if you're going to have like a ton of volume bounces, yeah, I think 10 is fine. And I see like between 10 and 15, again, you're not getting too much of a difference. So 10 is fine. 
that's pretty much it, right? You don't need to, like, if you want, you can, like, so this is anisotropy at zero. So you'll notice, like, the edges will kind of, you know, fade out completely. So it doesn't look very cloud-like. So you want an isotropy higher, okay? Like, don't go all the way to one, the cloud will just disappear. So around 0.5 or 0.6 is, is like a good place to be. And then you can also like, we can tweak around with the smoke brightness and the density to kind of, you know, get a little more detail into the whole thing. Okay, see, so I can like take this and maybe like lower the density a little and see what we're getting. Yeah, that's not bad. Okay, so, or we can sort of like just find a balance between the density scale and the smoke brightness. So you can have like enough detail with, uh, with enough light sort of passing through. Don't get the extension fall off too high. It'll just sort of like wash out the whole thing. But yeah, there you go. So that is fine. So now if I take the sun and sort of bring it around again, you should get, you know, like a decent enough result. So if I just take this, see, so there you go. So you get like this very nice outline. This is because of an isotropy. And you also get like enough detail in the back, you know, in, in the shadow area. So you it feels cloud-like. So the extinction fall off, and the anisotropy are probably the two most important things, but the extinction fall off is really important because if the extinction fall off is zero, like it just looks terrible, right? So it takes too long to see, this is extinction fall off at zero. So even if you have an isotropy, the rest of it doesn't make any difference because the extinction fall, without the extinction fall off, you get nothing, okay? So this is probably the most important or this is definitely the most important value in all of it, right? So you get that up to 0.6 or 0 0.7 and it immediately starts looking like a cloud, you know, which it wasn't before. And then you can also have like albedo contribution, which is like, it's sort of like a diffuse contribution. I don't think we need that. I think it will make it darker. Or if you want to make it like, you know, go even brighter than it is, you can get that. But I think one is fine. You don't need to go higher than this. See, there you go. Whoa, okay, that's way too much. Maybe let's keep it at 1.1, see what we get. Yeah, I think this is fine. You know, let's let's stay here, I think we're good. You don't need to tweak any of these unless you want to start, start making like a more customized cloud. Like if you're doing like a cartoon or something and you want something very specific looking, you know, like a pink cloud or a orange or like at sunset you want something specific. I'll do another video for that. Okay, like I'll show you how to build like a custom a uh, cloud shader or like a custom volume shader so you can sort of tweak it to whatever level you want but this is just if you want to create like a more realistic you know cloud so if i take this let's bring it in, let's bring the light towards the front and see what we get so there you go see so this is like you know this is the light towards the front and let's get it higher yeah there you go so we can get it low and yeah, so this gives you like, you know, a perfectly good sky and uh, I should do another video on the physical uh, sky system, but this is like, uh, if you take the Karma physical sky now, you get something called as sky, in the sky mode, you'll get instead of dome light, which is, this is the standard dome light sky. Okay, which is this, which is not bad, actually, like for this purpose, it actually doesn't look too bad at all. You know, like if I just take this, let's bring it to the back. Let's get this higher. Whoa, okay, very bright. Hold on. Yeah, there you go. Oh, that's not bad. So this is like the standard dome light sky that you get. Okay, but they added like a new mode in there called atmospheric, which sort of does like a volumetric sky. So that's a different thing altogether, but I'll do another lesson on that because that's what I was using so far. But yeah, this is not like, even with the standard sky, it actually looks pretty decent. Like, let me just lower the sun intensity a little bit. Yeah, but there you go. So this is like, you know, and of course like the sun, the sun size makes a difference. Like you're getting like shadows here, which you can see like within the cloud. If I get to a proper angle, so you can see, you'll be able to see shadows over here you know, like streaking through. So if you want, like, if you increase the sun angular size or lower the size, you'll get like sharper shadows within the sun, sorry, within the cloud. So I'm currently on a 3080 Ti, uh, and this is slow, like cloud rendering is slow. Okay, but then the other thing is like, uh, getting a cloud to look like this is actually pretty hard. 
and uh, like I was checking a couple of the other shaders and I couldn't really find all of these settings like the extinction fall off and you know like the an anisotropy I've seen but extinction fall off I haven't seen in quite a few other render engines. So this look is actually you know pretty distinct and uh, yeah like if you want to do like real realistic looking clouds then you know get a good graphics card or have a lot of patience. <laughs> But yeah, so there you go. So if I take this and let's say if I just now if I increase the sun size to let's say like something really big, then the shadow sort of soften out. But anyways, like that's pretty much it. So this is not a very complex lesson, but you get, you know, a pretty good result out of it. So as I said, like I'll do another video on, uh, see, there you go. So you can, you can, now you can make out the difference. See, like when it is too high, it's sort of like really sort of like the angular size is too high. It sort of softens out a lot. And if it's very, very small, then you should be able to see like, you know, you'll be able to see like proper, see, you can see like the shadow lines over here, you know, you can actually see like proper volumetric shadows passing through this. Okay. Okay. So that's pretty much it. So the next lesson, I'll show you how to build like a custom uh, volume shader. So if you want to sort of tweak this and add more colors to it and things like that, or maybe, you know, you want to do like a, a shader for like a nebula or something like that. So we'll see how to do that in the next video.